personally, yeah, the money is is de minimis. But if they were to offer some kind of refund anywhere from $25 to $50, we only paid $100 or $50 per room. But the cost of the breakfast, which we eventually got, uh, $40, $50 would be nice, would be one. But more importantly, I would like for them to take off of their website the free breakfast. We were driving back. We had driven 15 hours straight on our trip down from Minneapolis to Ohio to see my partner's uh, 93-year-old uncle who had just gotten out of a rehab facility after a major heart attack and coronary. Fortunately, we saw him two days right before the coronavirus uh, uh, lockdown of his rehab facility went in place. Uh, So otherwise, we wouldn't have seen him. So we were very fortunate that he was at home. In fact, on the second time we were seeing him, uh, we got the call from the rehab facility and uh, they said it's locking down. So we were very fortunate to see him. But rather than drive 15 hours straight back, uh, all the way from Ohio to Minneapolis or Minneapolis, St. Paul, we decided to stop in Chicago. We uh, looked at Airbnbs and there was nothing of reasonable price because we were traveling. There were five of us. We were traveling with myself, my partner, Connie, her two adult children, Nick and Amanda, and her mother, uh, Nancy. So there were five adults. Uh, we were on a limited budget. We had rented a van. Uh, we had spent uh, three nights in a hotel down uh, near Columbus, uh, actually Marysville. And so we um, went online and found this place. It was very reasonable through Travelocity, uh, America's Value Inn in Barrington, Illinois. Now, the reason we really picked it was because it said free breakfast. Uh, The hotel we had stayed at in Marysville had a wonderful, delightful uh, continental breakfast. We had gotten waffles, fresh fruit, yogurt, um, as new, as good motels do. The ad said free breakfast, and we thought, perfect, this will save us $40 to $50, Uh, and that's we we got there. So we first pull up. And you can't pull up under the alcove to go into the building. It was uh, taped off with uh, like police tape, yellow police tape. We didn't think anything about it in the past. And uh, we check in. And uh, then Connie, everything went fine with check in. And we got two rooms, uh, one for the kids and her mother and a room for ourselves. And she asked, what time is breakfast? And the gentleman checking us in said, there is no longer breakfast. And we said, wait a second, that's um, what your the website says. And he says, no, we haven't done it for six months. We'll give you cookies and coffee. And we said, that's not acceptable. Um, and we huddled for on the side for about two, three minutes. And we said, uh, I said, we want uh, compensation. For no breakfast. And he said, what I can do for you is I can cancel your reservation and you can go elsewhere, but I will give you no compensation for no breakfast. It was 1030 at night at this point. We were in a suburb of uh, Chicago where we knew nothing. We'd have to go looking. So we decided to take the room. Things went downhill from there. Um, we went up to our room, which was on the other side of the hotel from the kids and her mom. They didn't even get us a room close together, went into the bathroom and the bathroom was half painted. Um, didn't know what was going on with that. So we then called him and he gave us a caretaker came, gave us a room next door. That room The comforter had stains on it. One of the chairs was stained. Uh, We pulled the comforter back and the pillows were stained. 
uh, we were able to find two clean pillows and decided rather than argue with them, we would just keep the room. We then got a call from her son who was down in the other room uh, at the other side of the motel. We got him and his key card wouldn't work at that point. So we went back with him to the office and asked for a new key card, gave us a new one, and that wouldn't work. He then took his master key card to the room, still couldn't get in. He pounded on the door. His sister and grandmother let him in. He said, you'll just have to let you in. So they never gave Nick or the people in the first floor room an operable key card. We have slept that night. Um, there was no variable heat for the uh, room. It was the, the heater was either on or off. And so it, it was reasonably warm, but it, it would have been nice to have adjusted it so it was cooler. Um, in the morning, Connie went to take a shower and she never got truly warm water. It was lukewarm the whole time. Um, then Nick said to me, he said, did you see our room? I then went to his room. There was a gaping hole about this large in the bathroom wall. Then finally, he said there was a puddle on the floor. And he said the toilet leaked all night. Um, I went in and I said to the man who checked us in, I said, I, I want to talk to the owner. He said he'll be in at 10 o'clock. And it was 730 in the morning and we planned to hit the road. And I said, that's not acceptable. And finally, the owner called. And during this process, I went to see the breakfast. So the breakfast was on the back side of the office. I go and it says, and I have pictures on my phone, said, still said free breakfast, uh, 6 a.m. to 9. And I tried to open the door and went back and I said, you can't even get into your so-called free breakfast room. He opened the door and uh, there were dried not even fresh cookies, dried cookies like you would get at a, uh, a gas station. And I didn't even try the coffee. Um, so it was just an absolute miserable experience. Uh, this motel was filthy. Uh, they didn't offer a free breakfast. Um, I have had uh, two or three similar experiences None in the United States. One was in Egypt, uh, supposedly in Egypt, a four-star hotel. And um, I don't know. Well, I don't want to sound racist, but the owners and the managers were not of original, uh, did not appear to be from America. And I believe the problem is their standards are of a third world country and this motel had the standards of a third world country. Oh, one other thing, uh, while we were leaving, went by the ice machine. I, it said out of order, lifted the ice machine. So didn't even have ice, ice and the vending machine next to it that had candy and chips and the like had one, had two or three candy bars and it was the only thing in the whole machine. Well, uh, I uh, made two calls to the city of Barrington. Uh, one on the website, uh, I spoke to uh, or left a message for the chief building inspector. Um, I mentioned we couldn't pull in front of the building that it had police tape around the uh, portico that you would pull under. And then the next morning, Connie noted a red stop work order on the window of the check-in room. So apparently, uh, and being a lawyer and knowing construction, it apparently, uh, it looked like a large vehicle smashed into the portico and needed repair work. And I'm assuming they started repair work and did not pull a permit, uh, a building permit. And that is why, the uh, red stop work order was on the window uh, of the uh, motel. So I called the chief building inspector. I have not heard back from him. This is, let's see, this is Thursday now. 
and I spoke with uh, him on uh, left a message on Monday. So three days, two days ago. So um, I then called the city attorney. Uh, he was not listed on the city website, but I called the city manager's office. Uh, city attorney is an attorney called Jim Bateman. Mr. Bateman uh, is listed on the web as a civil rights attorney, but the only links I found to him was as city attorney for the city of Barrington. Uh, I called Mr. Bateman and I uh, asked to speak to his paralegal, spoke with her briefly, and I said, we were ripped off by a motel in your community. Gets on the line, he immediately starts screaming at me that he was dealing with a crisis, there was an epidemic in his town, and didn't I have better things to do, and I should call the attorney general, and he essentially hung up on me. Very rude, very arrogant. Um, I uh, filed a review of his behavior with one law firm review and tried to do it with Avro, but Avro would not take my review. As I have found in the past, they are terrible with attorney reviews because I didn't hire him or he wasn't an opposing attorney. Uh, they wouldn't take my review. I, I also, uh, lastly, did file a complaint with the Better Business Bureau in uh, Northern Illinois. Uh, they did not have a listing for America's Best Inn, but I did write a review uh, about the hotel for the BBB. Well, first thing, um, personally, yeah, the money is is de minimis, but if they were to offer some kind of refund anywhere from 25 to 50 dollars we only paid a hundred dollars or 50 dollars per room but the cost of the breakfast which we eventually got uh 40 50 dollars would be nice would be one but more importantly i would like for them to take off of their website the free breakfast um because at this point, uh, I haven't checked in two days, but I was still up when I checked the other morning. I don't want other people to go to their motel under the false pretense we did because what they're doing with the free breakfast is literally false advertising. They are lying to get consumers to come to their motel and then... I think too many consumers are like us. You get there uh, in the middle of the night. Well, not the middle of the night, but late, light night. You don't want to go looking for another motel. You just want a, a better motel. I would also like to see the city of Barrington take enforcement action against this motel. Uh, wandering around their motel, seeing the condition, uh, I didn't mention there were torn screens and stained carpet in the halls. I'm sure uh, a competent building inspector going through that building would find dozens, if not hundreds of code violations. Um, I would like the city of Barrington to do a uh, to do an adequate annual or semi-annual inspection of that motel and write up those code violations. Um, I'm sure that many of those rooms should not be um, in operation. Like the water, they're, they're saying, oh, there was hot water. How many people, uh, it appeared they had probably between 60 and 100 rooms, how many people get up in the morning and can't take a warm shower? They need to get adequate warm water. So it's it's more than compensating me and my partner and uh, our family. It is making it right for all the other guests who will come in the future. So they either need to fix their facility to bring it up to uh, American standards, or they need to be put out of business. My, my partner and I are not picky. We have no problem staying in Motel 6s. For us, Price is the most important factor um, that uh, a hotel for us or a motel is simply a room to put your hat, uh, your bags for the night, and get asleep. 
Uh, we would much rather take that money and buy museum tickets. We had planned to see museums in Chicago. Uh, and so instead of staying at a Marriott or a Hyatt or a Regents and, you know, spend $100 per room for night or $100 plus, we prefer to take that money and go buy tickets to the Museum of Science and Industry. We wanted to see the virtual uh, speech by Dr. Martin Luther King at the uh, Black History Museum in Chicago. Unfortunately, we were one day late. They just closed it uh, on our way there. So we're going to have to make another trip back to Chicago. So we are not real picky when it comes to where we stay. Well, it's been very interesting. Um, that uh, we uh, went grocery shopping very quickly to get some items. I was stunned at Walmart, went to Walmart, and some shelves, particularly in the grocery section, were half bare or mostly bare. Um, Connie loves to break bread. Um, one of her uh, children has a uh, allergy. And so we went to get, uh, I think it was gluten-free bread, but there was virtually no um, flour in the Walmart grocery store. We went across the street to Aldi's and fortunately Aldi's had a whole pallet uh, and it was half gone of flour. So uh, there is obviously panic buying now. Um, we We've discovered a uh, grocery store that deals in near bad goods, uh, just near the expiration date. And if you went down to our pantry, our larder in the basement, you would find there's at least a month of food down there. And we have two freezers. So we're in very, very good shape. We, we, we buy uh bargain food a great deal and and we're we're very well supply, supplied and uh, we aren't concerned in the slightest um as a consumer i don't think it's fect affecting me much um i am very concerned at first and uh, my brother is also an attorney we had uh, i at first i thought a lot of the reaction the shutdowns were alarmist now seeing the death toll in Italy, and you compare that to South Korea, I think uh, the uh, the stay in place is very legitimate. Um, I understand it. Um, particularly, I drive uh, disabled uh, children with my bus, and uh, some of them could be very seriously uh, affected. Um, we have a friend who spends time down in uh, Dominican Republic every winter. He just got back two days ago. Um, our friend who runs a campground over in Wisconsin has severe uh, CP, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. If uh, Marv were to get coronavirus, I am absolutely convinced it would be fatal for him. Um, I think a number of people uh, in my age bracket, fortunately, I am in exceptionally good health for a man my age, but I think a lot of people my age are at risk. Um, how it affects consumers, I'm not sure. I'm more concerned about how we change our behavior. Uh, I'm very concerned that our president right now, that's why I was up to 2 a.m., is more concerned about uh, his re-election chances, and he wants to end um, the uh, stay in place, he's saying next week, um, that right now, to stop the virus, we have to, they're using the phrase, level the curve. Um, well, you, you, you uh, let me go back here. He, our president, is falsely spreading the information that this malaria drug is going to work. Dr. Anthony Fauci, who was in a press conference with him the other day, said, no, this will not work. Um, and um, President no longer has appeared with Dr. Fauci in the um, press conferences. And I was listening to NPR and I'm reading that this drug is now being hoarded by medical personnel, even though there's no evidence 
that um, this medication works, doctors and their families seem to be hoarding it for themselves. And the people who truly need it are not able to get it. So that you ask about, uh, I think that's the first real consumer effect that some people may die who actually need this medication because others have heard the president's false information are getting it and hoarding it. So people may die who need this medication. Kuala Kwanlin, I think. I, I, I butchered the pronunciation and I apologize for that. 